obviously your piece of furniture, your top, and we're gonna need a large oval bristle brush, and I'm using Annie Sloan Pure um, Chalk Paint, and we're gonna use graphite as the, the marble veins through the piece. We'll also need a large chip brush, a soft chip brush, and that'll make sense later when I show you how we're gonna use those things. So basically, we're gonna prep the board we're going to put one coat of pure we're going to let this dry and then we're going to put apply lacquer over this and then another coat of pure the reason we're going to do the lacquer in between is that we're going to add plenty of water on the lid and we're just going to really apply a count of paint any what, what way and um, cover up all of the wood. You need full coverage and like I said we're going to use Annie Sloan lacquer when this is fully dried to seal off this coat. Once the lacquer is dried we're going to repeat the whole process. I've chosen pure because it's very pure and it's quite translucent. It's not very often that I'll ever paint a full piece of furniture with pure. Um, I would really use it in mixing tones so if you need to mix a tone it's a great colour for that. But in this case, I'm going to do something a little different. So this is going to be fully pure, but we're going to add our marble markations across the pure. So the thing is about marble, it's almost translucent when you look at it. It has rivers of veins going in and out, weaving through, through the, the stone. So this is why I've chosen pure. Old white. Uh, original or pure will all do the same thing in this effect so let's see how it goes. Now that the pure is completely dry we're going to work on the marble effect this is the fun part. So what we're going to need is a couple of artistry brushes uh, one slightly bigger and one slightly smaller. This is a rigger brush. I have lots of different brushes for all different effects. These two might not be the, the right two, but we'll find out as the process evolves. And the other thing we're going to use is the graphite. Um, graphite is one of Annie's colours. And all I'm going to do is apply a small amount into a bowl. And then we're going to spritz this down just to loosen the paint. It's a little thick and it's a very old can. So the paint is thickened up in the can. So we need it to be more watery and consistency. And let's have a little look. We're going to use the brush to mix that. And let's see. Yeah, that looks good to me. Make sure it's well mixed. To, to create this technique, we're going to have to reinvigorate the paint, look at me. So all we're gonna do is mist the whole of the pure. So the trick is, we're basically waking up the pure. By adding water, it's gonna loosen that paint. It's gonna make it active again. So once we've given a good old spritz, you can let this sit for a, about a minute or so. And what it'll do is the, the, the water will seep into the paint and it reinvigorates it. What I've got with me is two cloths. Um, this is much the same as when we're wet distressing anything. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the excess off. Um, maybe a little bit more on. And this is the fun bit. 
Here goes. Now this is a bit scary, but all we're going to do is going to hold the brush on the very tip and we're going to tickle across the board and we're going to basically just roll the brush across in a random pattern. And if you hold the brush on the end, it will kind of guide itself, but roll it as we go along. And don't be too fussy about how you do it. So we're going to put three veins across. And that looks really, really strange. So once you've applied your paint in a random sort of pattern, we're going to use a, a cloth and we're going to blot it. And it looks shocking, trust me, just go with it. So that basically is blurring the boundaries of this line. You may need to add some more water just to loosen that. But what it's doing is adding a softness to that line. Then we're going to take one of our chip brushes, a soft chip, chip brush, and we're just going to soften that line out by just in a random pattern. Can you see how my hand's working just across? And what it does, it moves the paint around and softens. So that's basically giving us, you know, nice rivers of paint colour, which is the graphite. Move that out of the way. And it's allowing us to, and it should be enough to just allow us to put the other colours on. So that's the first coat. And as you work it, the paint will loosen a little bit more so you'll be able to soften it with the brush if you need to dry your brush it's a bit like dry brushing but wet brushing so take off some of the pigment off the end and it allow you to soften it that little bit more and what i have found is some of the lacquer because we haven't done this video in real time it's bubbled up but i'm not going to worry about that because i'm pretty sure when the moisture comes out of the paint it will flatten so the next part of the process is your rigger brush, your little fine artistry brush. And we're gonna use the outline of where we put the first rivers of marble through and just run up against the edge of them. So that's your guide. So here we go, we're gonna take it from the same sort of place and we're just gonna add rolling the brush, kind of jumping back and forward because marble has cracks and straight across. So that's one. I'm going to blend it right the way through to there and we'll do the same across this side again up and maybe a straight bit roll around and again here it really is creative freedom you just do it the way you want to do it look I've dropped some bits there I'm not worried about them because we're going to soften and blend them and we're going to go back and do some more so back to the cloth I'm just going to dab them out a little bit. It adds another layer. And then we're going to use the brush again, soft, blendy, blendy. Like so. And can you see, I'm going from all different angles. I'm moving that brush around to allow it to soften it in different angles and different directions. So that's that. We might need to just add another little spritz. It's keeping the paint with some moisture in it to help you create this look. And I'm gonna go back. I think I want to add some more. I've got a big white area here, so I'm just gonna go right across here. I think that'll be nice. A little bit of a soften. Yeah, that's good for me. Oops, lost a brush. So I suppose it's really the choice of where you apply, take some off, where you apply your veins and rivers. So I'm just going to kind of go there, a bit breaking off from there, uh, maybe one big straight one there, a little bit up here, and then we'll soften again. you're not too sure about something you've done you can literally erase it by brushing it 
but I'm quite happy with that. I want it to be as natural as possible. And then we're gonna, again, pick up with some darker areas. We're just gonna pick up with a very, very fine, just tickling the edge. It's adding shadow to a vein, soften. And pick up another one. We're gonna go across here, connect back in. And if you notice, I'm kind of doing it on a 45 degree angle to take away from anything to do with the grain of wood. We don't want it to look like a piece of wood. We want it to look like marble. So marble would be sheer. We're gonna do a little bit over here. And sometimes it's really good to throw in a wild card with, with this effect and just do a one straight line right across. And it's brave, but sometimes just to go like that and soften, it can add another sort of like a crack, a fracture in the, the marble, which I'm quite happy about. And then we've got quite a lot of paleness here. So we're gonna kind of Bring some in there and then soften that bit. So it really is up to you where you place these marks. Well, I think. into a little bowl and we're just going to give it one um, one coat of wax with my new Annie Sloan brush which I got from my local stockist and you really must support your local stockist they do an amazing job um, they'll tell you an awful lot about the paint um, things that I learn things new about the paint all the time from my stockist um, I've never been formally trained by a stockist, but and, th and this is how I found these techniques. Basically, the journey is all about exploring the paint. I was never taught how to use it, probably used it in all manners of ways that was wrong, and come up with these ideas. So by taking these, this journey, it's allowed me to make the mistakes and learn by the mistakes. So this is what the online workshop's about. You learning with me, I learn, and you learn. So once we finish this, I will dress the picture and you can see close up the end result. We're gonna add it back to its base and we should have something that resembles an expensive marble top table. If you want more durability, leave this overnight and give it another coat tomorrow.